um, running their businesses, you tend to become emotional about it. And the truth of the matter is if you cannot manage your emotions, then it's hard for you to manage your business mm. because uh, most of it are connected to our emotions. You know, Jason, what, last time I saw you, you were on stage actually talking about one of those experiences that you weren't afraid to talk about the failure you had of being in debt and trying to rise up. Talk to us about that. What is the turning point in terms of someone saying, I've got to get over this because I've got responsibilities to my shareholders and my business? Yeah, because as, a, as Chinese, we were taught that if you have a business, you have to borrow money. And it's part of our culture also as Filipinos. In fact, um, there is a study that we have more than 111 dialects. And one word that stands out, which is common Utang. to all of the uh, dialects, <laughs> it, dialects Utang. is Utang. Utang. It's really? common yeah. to all of the 111, 111 the, uh, dialects. Money can make us dumb in a sense, because if you do not have money, it will make you more creative. My turning point happened when I had this speaking engagement in 2010. Mm -hmm. And the topic was about personal finance. And I told the audience that we had, me and my wife, we had eight credit cards, all with debt. Wow. Because in one of our businesses, uh, we were forced to borrow money. It's a restaurant. So our partners promised that they would infuse more capital, but it didn't materialize. So our debt balloon. So millions of debt plus the eight credit cards. Wow. And I showed all of the, I saw, showed it in the picture and mm -hmm. I put out, brought out my last credit card. I told them this is the last one. <laughs> they got a pair of scissors. I told everyone this is what they call it plastic there on surgery. Stage. <laughs> <laughs> and every, it, I guess it resonated with the crowd. Quite symbolic. And the last one, last line of debt. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It looks like all of them are also in debt. Mm -mm. Yeah. I didn't even know that the Chinese, that's the culture. What's the thinking behind that? Well, it was uh, passed down through the generations mm -hmm. and it's unfortunate that in my dad's side i'm half chinese mm -hmm. it's a practice already mm -hmm. and unfortunately with our family also there were others who were deep in debt mm -hmm. and that was really painful for me because i told myself that's not gonna happen mm -hmm. but it also happened mm -hmm. and i guess because of uh, lack of diversification mm -hmm. because if you're a businessman you want to invest and when you, you want to take a risk on yourself to put all your chips on the table. So the concept of hedging in other places wasn't exactly the first thing you thought about. Yeah? yeah, yeah. It was a big mistake on my part. What was it like waking up every day to millions? Well, oh, uh, waiting for you. I have butterflies in my stomach every day before I sleep when I wake up in the morning. And every time someone would call me at before 9 a.m., it will give me shivers because I know it's the bank. It was a collector's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and my, our checks are about to... <laughs> To bounce. Yeah. Yeah. How did you get out of it? It was a real. It was really change of perspective, mm -hmm. and to face the problems head on, because entrepreneurs that's their biggest uh, challenge. Mm -hmm. When your business is having problems, it's pride. You have an in air, You want an air of invincibility also, right? I can yeah. imagine. Yeah. It's interesting. I spoke to one of my friends who lost more than me. We had coffee, and eventually he recovered. Also, he mm -hmm. told me, Jason, if you lose money. Wag ka magmumukhang kawawa. Kasi so kawawa ka na lang. Yeah. <laughs> so kawawa. kailangan dapat lo yeah. mukhang wala kang problema, ganun. In a sense, All the time. yeah, because mm -hmm. people, they would know eh, lalayuan ka nila eh, mm -hmm. if they see you like that. Mm -hmm. And he told me, uh, never think of yourself as someone who's poor. You have to learn how to fail with dignity, grace, and self-respect. Mm -hmm. So ever since that time, I never considered myself poor. Even though we were millions in debt, mm -hmm. I only considered myself broke. Because poor is permanent. That's right. But broke is only temporary. How long did it take for you to get out of debt? Uh, two and a half years. Mm -hmm. Two and a half years. Well, congratulations. Like you earlier, you said uh, one of the most common mistakes is when businessmen deal with money very emotionally. Can you make that more concrete? Like how how do you make mistakes when you're emotional about what you do? You make mistakes when you're emotional because you don't think anymore. Mm -hmm. So your business becomes your baby. Uh -huh. And once you are too attached to it, there are some sayings that may sound nice, but they're actually maladaptive. Mm -hmm. In a sense, it's counterproductive uh, to follow those advices. One, for example, is winners never quit. 
but quitters never win. Mm. That's actually wrong. Yeah, it's pretty simplistic too, really. Think about yeah, it, right? it sounds sometimes nice. Sometimes you have to quit while you're ahead. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes uh, even if you lose, you you should quit. You know how to cut your losses, basically. Right, right, right. And, right. and fight another day. Mm -mm. So things like that. And positive thinking is also uh, not really that positive because you have to... I, I like the term positive believing rather than positive thinking because What's the difference? positive believing is you've done your homework so mm -hmm. now you're positive that it's going to turn out well for you there's a dynamic between impulse and logic and i think you feel as a businessman we all we, we always look at that what gets ahead of each other and you need both but what was like the first concrete step you did to say okay i'm going to face this debt and i'm going to get out of it bit by bit payment by payment it's interesting my when my dad passed away he used to be one of the heads of this uh, huge department store chains way back and he actually was owned by my uncle so he had power he had leverage he was in purchasing and he told one of his friends a few days before he passed away that did he make the right choice because unlike his peers who became uh, rich more successful because they were in purchasing they received a lot of gifts under the table he didn't do any of that and when I heard that story, um, his friend told him, my dad's name was Jim, he passed away 10 years ago. He said, Jim, that's okay because the most important thing you leave your kids, it's not really the inheritance per se, but it's the legacy that you leave them. So it's thick. That's why when I owed people money, and even if I don't have to pay them anymore because mm -hmm. the, our business went bankrupt, mm -hmm. it's not personal, I went out of my way to pay these people. That's why it took us longer. So aside mm -hmm. from the credit card debts, I had personal debts also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I remember I owed this uh, one of my relatives half a million. And I can't pay her. I was like paying her 5,000, 10,000 a month. And that would take me like more than five years. <laughs> was there interest on top of that? You... It's fortunate that she didn't put yeah. any interest anymore. She did add interest. But the uh, last check I wrote her was 125,000. And I gave her the check. It was like, yung nabunutang ka ng tihek. Yeah. Yeah. I was in the car with my kids and I told them, come on, let's shout freedom. And my kids were shouting freedom, <laughs> little kids. Yeah. They didn't know what I was talking about, but it really was one of those memorable victories. Do you have to change lifestyle to be able to finish paying all of the debts? Yeah. I guess on my end, when I started uh, this business before, I started really young. We had... Uh, a business we called house to house change wow. mm. i was 18 years old that time so internet was not yet a thing online then we would go to the houses of our friends those who who does, don't have time anymore mm -hmm. to go to the malls go shop. for shopping uh, every christmas season good to know friends like that no? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the biggest i think we sold was one person bought eighty thousand. Uh, for just one transaction, yeah, okay, I'll get like, 10 of these, 5 yeah. of these. If you start that today, you will be called a personal <laughs> shopper, not a chang, house to house yeah, changi anymore. the forerunner of the last mile delivery. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. all right. So, and then how, what kind of lifestyle changes did, did you have to make? Well, we cut on a lot of expenses. Mm -hmm. Because of that, I, I became successful at a young age. But at the age of 30, that's when we lost everything. Mm -hmm. We can't even buy diapers for my children. Mm. It was difficult. But what I learned is when I spoke to my friends who were really successful, I didn't borrow money from them. They didn't give me any handouts. Mm. And they didn't want to rob me of the opportunity to grow from this experience. Mm. Was so, that what it was? Yeah, it, it, it is, it is. Seriously? So those are good friends. So Tough they, love actually works. Uh, oh, uh, parang, actually, okay, think, kaya mo to. Parang ganun. They have yeah. belief that you can do this. So oh, that's eh. why they didn't give you anything. Ako din, parang hindi rin ako humiram sa kanila. Ah. But, you, you know, the love is there and they want me to learn from it. So for the first time in my life, we had a budget. We started budgeting. For the first time at 30? For the first time at 30. Uh -huh. And un unfortunately, we don't have any money to budget also because our expenses were here, but yeah. our, the money coming in well, was But at least you owned that. up to and started looking at expenses versus earnings and, and, you know, the honest questions to ask, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's interesting going back to my story when we sold House to House Changge. At, uh, at 18 years old, that's cute. But age of 30, my friends who were my suppliers found out what happened. Three different people. And we, I talked to them. Mm -hmm. They told me, you know, Jason, we heard what happened to you. 
why don't you go to our warehouse, choose any item you want, start selling. If you mm -hmm. have any sales, mm -hmm. you can remit to us. If not, you can return it. It's amazing. So I ended up having like half a million to one million worth of inventory. Mm -hmm. And my uh, the investment was really, the capital that I had was just character or laway. Yeah.